Hi, this is Charlie Montotiella with uh, Blue Bear Flutes. Just want to bring you a new video today, one of our newest series, The Secrets of the Native American Flute. I think that you'll probably find some use in a, in a lot of the secrets that we have uh, of the Native American flute. And they're not really completely secrets, although the fact that we get a lot of people asking us certain questions, I figure this might be a good way to answer those questions. So, anyway, uh, not talking too much is one of those secrets. <laughs> this is a, uh, a wonderful flute that I play a lot. I actually played it in our most recent music video that I think all of you guys either do love, will love, or have loved. Um, this is uh, one of my kind of, I guess, regular playing flutes. It's, it's a really nice one made out of a type of cedar, and I play it quite often. Having said that, I've recorded a lot of music with it, and um, this particular flute, it's an F sharp, not that that really matters, but uh, this particular flute I've used so much that I realized that there's times when it gets wetted out, and wetting out is something that no matter what type of instrument you have, it can happen to it. Um, well, I'll say no matter what type, no matter what type of instrument that requires the human breath to play, uh, guaranteed a guitar probably won't get wet out unless you're taking it on a boat with you. Um, this flute, though, like I say, is not as necessarily likely to wet out as some are, and that's what I wanted to share with you is the reason why, and I'll show you what you can do to help stop them from wetting out as well. So any of you that have never seen a flute wet out or don't know what I'm talking about, when you play, the moisture from your breath going into this instrument um, collects in the very tiny little chamber in here, the little track that's underneath of whatever type of block you have. Some people have an elaborate block up here. Some people have just a sliver of river cane if that's the type of flute you're playing. This flute, um, out of cedar, it absorbs a lot of the moisture. However, after you know some time, I think with this one it takes it about an hour before it'll wet out. Um, in this particular environment, that's what I'm going to get to. Uh, when it does, if I'm just playing, it's not a problem. I can set it down and it eventually the moisture will come out of it or will soak into it or something happens, the moisture goes away, it evaporates usually, but that's, uh, that's one thing that can be done. Another thing, if say for example you're recording an album and you need this flute for say six hours of, of a recording session, um, there are some options, and that's something else we're going to talk about. First, we'll talk about what causes it. Like I say, your breath actually causes this. A trumpet, a trombone, a tuba, a baritone, a flugelhorn, anything like that has generally a spit valve on it. It's not really a fun thing to have to talk about, especially when you're talking about an instrument that you love and hold so dear. Uh, however, there's no spit valves on this sucker, and it wouldn't do you any good anyway because it doesn't really have like a lot of moisture building up into a liquid puddle inside of it. It's not what's happening. Um, it happens on a smaller scale and the reason that this happens is because usually the environment that you're playing in, say for example in my recording room here, um, we usually keep it about 70 something degrees and the body is about another 20 degrees on top of that and I live in southern United States where it stays relatively humid a lot, you know. Um, the uh, uh, weather down here is usually I think we get, what, about 30 inches of rain sometimes in a month maybe. <laughs> it can happen. Uh, so, uh, and of course a lot of the storms will blow through you, the hurricanes and tornadoes and what have you, and there's uh, usually rain involved with some of that. Um, that For that reason, m the moisture from my breath um, may be enough to condense inside of the track area of this flute if I'm playing in a cooler area than my body temperature. If I'm outside, which it's usually uh, say 90 degrees out here, or in the upper 80s at least, uh, even in the winter time, <laughs> uh, it, uh, it certainly won't be as likely to happen. It can happen, but it's really not as likely. So playing in a cool environment when your body is warm is one thing. Now if it was cool outside and you had been outside for a while and you kind of acclimated to it and breathing that cold air in and ex expressing the cold air you know as it comes out uh, eventually uh, your body won't put out as much humidity I don't believe as it would with the other scenario. So that's one thing to consider. Sometimes that kind of thing is unavoidable especially if you're recording music and you're doing it in a comfortable environment rather than in a really hot stuffy 
recording room. Uh, another thing to consider, and of course to avoid, is eating right before you play the flute. It's also not good to be hungry on that same, same note. Um, whenever you eat something, you salivate, and that's part of the way humans and a lot of mammals really digest their food. Um, the saliva actually builds up a lot of humidity in your mouth, and that comes out. Um, if you're hungry, if you ever noticed before when you're hungry, you salivate and you're like, oh boy, my mouth's watering for some whatever bologna right now. <laughs> and you uh, start thinking about your food that you're wanting to eat, even if it's chocolate cake, you start salivating a lot, producing a lot of humidity in your mouth. So it's good to be kind of comfortable, not really overly full, but you know, at least not hungry. And also, um, certainly you don't want to have food in your mouth while you're trying to play. And I've been kind of, you know, called out for that before. People come up to me at a show and I'm sitting down trying to eat my lunch as fast as I can. And they're like, could you play this for me? So I'm like, okay, give me just a second. I'll play it for you. Um, so that's one thing. Another thing is what you drink. Now, if you're playing in a recording session for six hours, you're probably going to have drank something in that time. Um, Yes, alcohol may dry your mouth out good, but it's not recommended for playing with a flute. And uh, a lot of people are snapping their fingers right now. But the, uh, the flute, probably the best thing for you to be drinking is just water. If you drink something that's sugary or that has a flavor to it, once again, those kind of things may leave something behind. And of course, you don't want to blow that through the flute, just like you wouldn't want to blow food through the flute. But leaving that in your mouth actually causes you to salivate, so that's a more, more issue. If you're long-winded, you might salivate more than other people. Um, and of course, those types of constraints, you know, the humidity, the temperature versus your body temperature, um, and what you're drinking and eating, or whether you're hungry or not, or and sometimes if you're thirsty. I noticed the other day I wasn't hungry when I was recording, but uh, I was thirsty, and I recorded for about, what, eight or nine hours that day, I think it was, and, and that day, it really uh, it made me realize that drinking water, you know, having water nearby is a good thing. You would think that you're putting more humidity back in your mouth, but you're actually helping it to stop. So that's a good thing. So you're playing the flute, playing the flute. It's starting to get some moisture. First step you want to do, put your finger over the sound hole like this, and, and that'll help blow some of it through. Um, and you only need just like a little bit to blow through. Now, that's good for maybe 10 or 15 minutes for most people, and that's about it. And then you got to stop and do either do that again or find our next solution, which is what we're going to do. Um, so uh, that's a possibility. It's a consideration. Uh, one of the things that will help your flute not went out so fast, too, is how it's made. Uh, the size of the track in here and how well it allows the moisture to go through, that's another thing. So I've been told before that our flutes don't wet out as quickly as some. However, um, that variance may vary from one flute to the next, even for me. So I'm going to be honest with you. Don't even take that into consideration. If somebody's selling a flute that says it's guaranteed not to wet out, let's find out why. <laughs> so uh, there's that. And then, you know, if it happens, it's going to happen eventually in your life. You have a couple of options. Number one, have a thousand flutes made for that recording session that are all in the same key. You know, so it's going to make some flute maker really happy. But uh, you don't have to go that route. You can, you can do something else. You know, there's actually a better solution. There are recording artists, friends of mine, that, that will have two or three of a similar flute. However, the, the tone quality of different flutes, even from the same flute maker, the same key, the same this, the same that, they may respond just a pinch differently. If someone asked me, to make uh, six flutes for them because they're going to be recording for a week straight or something and they needed those six flutes exactly the same, I can get them really close. And I'm sure that a lot of the other professional flute makers out there can, can probably do that as well. So just keep that in mind. But it's not really necessary when I show you the other option. And to do that, I'm going to have to let you zoom in and see what we're made of here. So I'm just going to disrobe my flute if that's okay. This is the block we were talking about for those of you who are beginning and need to know some of the names of things. Um, there's a lot of people that are going to have different names for different things and some of them are going to be correct and some of them might be something they've heard and they just haven't figured out where it's at yet. One of my favorite words not to say is fipple. <laughs> I think this is the fourth time I've ever said it in a recording. Uh, maybe just a third. 
but a fipple is the bottom lip of a Norwegian horse. Yep. So, anyway, you take this guy off, and you can see quickly the sound hole and the air supply hole, but if you'll zoom in and take a look at the track area. Okay, so you can see the moisture in there. Let me get out my handy-dandy famous pointer here. Um, if you look, you'll notice there's moisture throughout the track area, and there's even some on the sides of the, the sidewalls here too, which means it could be escaping out of the inside. Now, this flute didn't wet out through me playing. I didn't sit here for 45 minutes to an hour playing this flute to make it happen. I actually steamed it over my teapot, so <laughs> it was pretty quick. Not recommended, by the way. Don't steam your flutes. Um, so uh, if you can see that, can they see a pretty good camera lady? Okay. So I'm going to show you from right there what I like to do so that you can see firsthand and how this works. See if that did the trick. Well, how about that? That was pretty quick. So that's got it right there, just a little bit inside for good measure. Okay. So you can see what I did there, and I know that a lot of you are thinking, well, there's probably some problems involved with using that. This is just a, uh, a air can, you know. Uh, moisture free, safe for electronics, contents under pressure, vapor harmful, I guess you don't want to sniff this kind of stuff, and it says on here, no CFCs, and there's something else, there's a warning I was reading, medical emergencies, if you inhale it, move to fresh air, if you spray your eyes, wash them with water, if you spray it on your skin, wash with water, and treat for frostbite if necessary because this stuff coming out of here can be very cold. Now, I don't recommend blowing it, but just, you know, a tiny bit on my hand. It's not that cold to me, but I, I know they mean prolonged expo exposure if you just hold it like this. Also, it says don't shake the can up. If you shake the can up, the liquid that's inside of here will come out with it and that makes it even colder. So, now I'm going to tell you, uh, well, as a matter of fact, it says never shake or tilt the can before or during usage. Never use on camera mirrors, that's a good idea. Always use only in accordance with directions. And that's this particular bottle. Like I said, there's so many different brands of this stuff. Um, this one also contains a bitterant, it says, which uh, basically means, let's see, misuse, deliberately concentrating and inhaling contents may be harmful. Or fatal. So any of you guys out there that are thinking this is a good idea, don't do it. Uh, please use product responsibly. Okay, It contains a bitterant to help discourage inhaling abuse. So apparently there's people that abuse this stuff, had no idea. Um, I imagine there's people that abuse flutes too. So, bad flute. Uh, so, recommended for a number of things including cell phones. So, if you can spray your cell phone with it and put it up to your face and talk, I imagine it's probably okay. Although I'm not condoning using this. As a matter of fact, I would contact any of these companies before I decided to use something like this on a flute. However, what I did was I sprayed concentrated dry air on this flute rather than warm air from my mouth to blow the moisture out. Used to be back in the day, it would be like, and blow the moisture out. But chances are, by the time that hour's gone by that I've been playing and it started coming out of the flute already, my mouth's probably quite moist as it, as it is. So, um, anyways, so, um, you know, blowing it out seems to work. I have noticed before when I use this particular brand of, you know, canned air that it may cause it to taste bad if I spray it around the mouth, so I'll try to avoid doing that. Once again, you know, I'm not recommending you do that because you may be allergic to canned air. I don't know, man. I mean, it could be any number of things. It doesn't help when your camera person's laughing. Okay, it helps. But anyway, uh, the, uh, the canned air, you know, once again, works. I haven't been able to find a better solution than that just yet. It really works for me. And the reason I don't recommend that you do that specifically is because you may be buying canned air that has, like, some kind of crazy chemical added to it and I don't know what that chemical is so just FYI if you do anything crazy uh, let's see what, what's that thing that I'm supposed to say don't 
do what I do, yeah, don't do this at home. So, <laughs> anyway, if you do anything crazy like using canned air for your flute, I would highly recommend contacting the company that distributes it or that creates it and ask them, is it safe for me to blow this into a flute? You know, all flutes, even the transverse steel ones you see in orchestra, wet out. Um, Native American flutes do it a lot because this is a tiny area in here, and tiny areas are more overwhelmingly uh, troubled by and plagued by moisture than large open areas. But if you've seen me play my transverse flute before and then look down at it, it has a big ring of moisture on it, just as big as anything. And eventually that wetting out can cause a problem. It blows a lot of it out because the track is my mouth. Uh, however, the flute here, you know, it is what it is and you got to deal with it. So I hope this video has helped you guys. Once again, our uh, flute secrets is something that really isn't a secret to everyone. And some people apparently haven't got there yet or maybe just haven't thought of them. So that's why we want to share them with you. I hope that you've enjoyed it. Like I said, we would love to hear from you. You're welcome to leave a positive comment on our YouTube channel, please. We've read and laughed at lots of other ones that weren't positive, but anyway, I love you all. Even the ones that leave them bad comments, y'all have helped me sometimes in a really positive way. So uh, thank you all so very much for watching our videos. Uh, and once again, if you have an idea or question for another video in the near future you'd like to see, please feel free to send us a message, usually on our website or on Facebook or something like that. It's usually the way we do it. And uh, you can find our Facebook and our website, BlueBearFlutes.com. Uh, Facebook, of course, is listed on our website, but if you're looking for it, you can look for Blue Bear Flutes or Blue Bear Arts, or even, you know, Googling how to make an Native American flute. I think you'll find us that way, too. You guys take care, enjoy, and uh, happy flute playing.